Welcome to the show. This is Xavier Fox of uh, Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox. And this is the Monday Morning Talk. Um, I want you to I want to thank you for joining us as we launch the first talk show of Blaze em Up Cigar Radio. And today my guest host is holistic practitioner Samir Ali. And he's going to tell us how to improve our immune systems. <laughs> Very important information with the cold and flu season upon us and more, of course. Samir will also host his own monthly show on the station. Um, all the monthly shows lineups will start November 1st, and he will actually be on November 1st. He will be our first monthly show, and he will help us get our body right the holistic way. So make sure you tune in for all the launch shows coming up through the end of this month to meet all of the guest hosts. But right now, I want to introduce you to Mr. Samir Ali. Hey, Samir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am great. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. Doing fabulous. You know, I want to thank you for having me on your show and uh, you know, just commend you on all your hard work and uh, let you know how proud I am of you uh, for having such a platform where, uh, you know, people can tune in and just, you know, get what they need from day to day. You know, that's important um, that we have positive platforms out there with so much negativity going on in the world. So I, I commend you and I want to thank you for having me on the show. Well, I thank you for that great compliment. You know, I love what I do. And if I can help one person a day, not well, yeah, one person a day or one person per show, <laughs> you know, that, that's always a great thing. So let's start off. Tell our listeners who you are. Well, I like to uh, just keep it very simple. Um as to who I am, uh, I am someone who has um, been involved in the natural um, health world for over three decades now. Um, I am a master herbalist um, and uh, a nutritional scientist and an herbal, a, natural, a naturopathic practitioner for over 30 years. Um, it started out with me um, just on a personal level. Um, you know, I was exposed to uh, different people like in my family, uh, neighbors growing up, uh, you know, and like I say, relatives. And I noticed a pattern that the older the people got, the more they depended upon conventional medicines and prescriptions and things of that nature and so I don't know exactly at what age I was when it just all triggered I think I was um, either 19 or 20 when this happened and something just a light bulb went off and that light bulb was the more you stick to nature the less wrong you can go and so in my studies, because I didn't want to end up like those people, um, right. I, I came across so much fascinating information that I became uh, borderline obsessed with the knowledge of, you know, the, the human body, you know, this, this magnificent machine that we've all been blessed with. And so... Things like arthritis, diabetes, uh, cancer, you know, um, <clears throat> all of these things weren't necessarily something that came with old age as we were, you know, taught growing up. You know, you're getting old. So this is just, you know, you got to start throwing things out the window. This is not going to work. Uh, you're no longer able to do this or that. But more so that, it was contributed to our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, <clears throat> I realized that your health is in your hands. 
It's all up to you. And so um, my intent on this show is to take the listeners on a journey. So I'm going to need everyone to strap on their seatbelts. Um, sometimes I'm going to go fast. If I get too deep, then, you know, put your oxygen tank on. <laughs> just stay with me. <laughs> All right, then. <clears throat> but just stay with me. And, and I say that, um, you know, jokingly, but because a lot of this information isn't common, but it, it's going to become common in your life if you just keep tuning in. So let's start with the immune system. Look, can, I ask you one more? can I ask you one yes. more question? Sure just, sure. just for our newbies to this whole mentality, what exactly mm. is a holistic health practitioner? A holistic health practitioner is someone, like I stated before, is someone who sticks close to nature. Um, you become aware of certain things. So, and it all ties into the topic of having an immune system. So, what is the function of the immune system. It is to protect you, okay? That's its, its purpose, is to protect you so that your body may continue to do what it was designed to do, which is to sustain your life so that you may fulfill your purpose in the healthiest manner possible. So, holistically, you are whole when you stick to the nature of things. Uh, when you get into like, you know, altered foods or like seedless foods, which isn't food at all. It's just uh, a commercialized marketing scheme for more money. And that's um, a good point. We're going to touch on that toward the end. Yes. Um, and, you know, we were, we, were, we were conditioned, you know, we were conditioned to be away from from our natural nature, you know, they, um, and when I say they, you know, the powers to be, they have connect, disconnected everyone from the relationship of the earth itself. So we no longer have gardens, you know. I remember when my mom used to have a garden and she would make me, uh, wake me up at like the butt crack of dawn. <laughs> and then I, I, I'd be out there like as now. a kid. <laughs> Right. I, I, as, a, as, a, as a youngster, I would be outside in the back and my mom would grow like collard greens. She would wow. grow turnip greens. She had her own tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots. And I was being introduced to the relationship of nature through my mother. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> my mother uh, was someone who was, you know, she's from the South. Uh, she also went to culinary school. She was a phenomenal cook. Um, and she loved her garden, you know, and I was, you know, the garden keeper. And so I would have to contribute my relationship to holistic health with my mother, although my mother was not into holistic health herself. Oh. Ah. So my mother was old school. And what my mother would do is that my mother would, she came from the tradition of, you know, if you eat your vegetables, your fruits and your vegetables, then you're doing good. So no matter what else you do after that, it's just basically in God's hands. Okay. And it was meant, and it was meant to be. Did you guys so, eat pork back then? Yes, we did. We did eat pork. Yeah, we, we ate pork. I tore some pork up, you know, especially on Thanksgiving. Those ham sandwiches the day after were just, they were addictive. <laughs> <you know? laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what we were raised on pork. Well, I mean, you know, pork chops, you know, in the morning, the bacon, uh, the bacon, and then we, we got real fancy with it. When we got older, we would make bacon sandwiches with eggs. Oh yeah, you know, making egg egg the bacon, yeah. Bacon, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, you know, I did, but you know, again, that was like a lack of, um, you know, tradition, a lack of, uh, 
you know, uh, of being educated on your culture. It was a lack of uh, just, you know, knowledge, period. You know, we were separated from things. So no one told us what was bad for us in the way of food. Right. Because we were, we were taste trained. Right. So being taste trained is just like with anything else. If someone mentions to you, have you ever been to this particular restaurant or they mention a particular food? The first thing you're going to say is, how does it taste? Mm -hmm. Is the food good? Is the food good? How is it going to taste? So we are taste trained. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because we have taste buds and we want things to taste good, you know. But we are slaves to our taste buds. Yes. Yep. We are slaves to our taste buds. And so um, the big marketing companies that advertise all of these products, they know that if they can appeal to your taste buds then that portion of your hard-earned money is going to go to them and collectively if they get everybody contributing to the desire of satisfying their taste buds well you have a multi-trillion dollar industry yep look at mcdonald's and that's probably some of the worst food you can put in your body and they are still <sighs> the leading fast food restaurant. Interesting that you should say that. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched the documentary called Food Inc. Uh, if you haven't, uh, check it out. Food Inc. Uh, another one is Food Matchers. Uh, and one of my favorites is Forks Over Knives. They're all on Netflix uh, or some streaming uh, media. McDonald's is actually responsible for changing the way we eat and consume food in society. It is because of the high demand of the hamburgers that they were selling. They started to mass produce the cows at a rapid rate. Which increased our carbon footprint footprint which increased the amount of methane gas, which increased our waste, and which contributed to all of this um, processed meat and the way that, um, you know, cows were uh, fed and slaughtered. Mm -hmm. That started with McDonald's. McDonald's has satellites, and wherever a new a city or town or population of people are starting to grow, McDonald's maps it out to figure out where they're going to place their next McDonald's. Wow. And this is all, all over the globe. So <clears throat> getting back on point, um, we were separated from what it is to, um, you know, eat properly because at a basic level, we would talk, eat your fruits and vegetables. But, you know, nowadays, because of mass production, population increase, and uh, people's dietary habits, um, foods are being processed at not a normal rate. They're being sped up for the sake of maintaining that dollar. So the strength of the dollar that's being made off of these foods, as long as the taste is good, that's all that matters to people. So your immune system, your immune system, is not only about what you do not eat, you know, or what you do take into your body, but, you know, a large factor that contributes to that is what aren't you putting into your body? Right. Yep. You know, what are, and that can be spiritually, that can be mentally. Uh, Dr. Weil, uh, whom I am very fond of, he stated that it's very toxic to watch something as negative as the news every night and have that in your subconscious right before you sleep. Yep, yep. I stopped doing that a long time ago. Exactly. And so you have to understand that your immune system 
is based upon your lifestyle, not necessarily what you consume through your mouth. Hmm. So if you're around toxic people, that is causing your immune system to activate because you are under suspicion if you don't trust them. And each mood or thought releases a chemical from your body. That's very true. Yeah. If you are hearing something negative, like in the music that they're playing today, does the music sounds good, but the lyrics are horrible. Yes, they are. So it's it's what we back in the day would call tricknology. So today they pass off bad things with humor. You know it's wrong, but if it made you laugh, then that must mean it's okay. Hmm. So anything that's wrong can be passed off as being okay because it made you laugh. That is pretty true. Because if you look at, it's just like that last challenge they had on TikTok. What was it? some kind of crate thing? And people were falling off and actually getting hurt really bad. But because a lot of people were laughing, it went on for a while. I think TikTok had to take the challenge off of the platform because crazy people were still doing it and breaking themselves up. Exactly. I remember that one of the first challenges that was very, um, it was close to fatalities when people had the cinnamon challenge. Oh, yeah. You know, if you ingest a teaspoon of cinnamon, you can actually choke to death. That's correct. Because the intensity of cinnamon has certain heat properties and that much heat consumed in your body without moderation can cause adverse effects, even be fatal. Man, I don't so, like cinnamon. I don't know how they did that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> as long as it puts you in a certain mood, then it's okay. So, what do they do with food? The food is unhealthy. You can develop slowly some type of ailment, fungus, virus, or disease over time. So they advertise pastries, cookies, pies, but it tastes good. So it's okay. Are you trying to tell me I shouldn't go in there and get my um, peach cobbler that I have waiting for me with my ice cream? <laughs> By all means, I am telling you to... Be ten toes indulged in that pleasure because it sounds delicious, especially if you made it. <laughs> you are such a phenomenal cook. Yes, yes, that's my thing. <clears throat> right. So, awareness. Lack of awareness can hamper your immune system. So, people uh, in Hollywood, they are awarded for, you know, their performances for, you know, best actor and best actress and things of that nature. But in reality, the best actors and actresses are newscasters. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. You're right. Those are your best actors and actresses ever that you will find on the planet. If you notice, when they are presenting the news to you or reporting the news as they claim to be, um, how their mood changes and facial expressions change based upon what it is they are reporting. It is because they are giving you a visual of how you are supposed to receive that. Mm. And the reason behind that is because it well, it's it's just all indoctrination. This is their way of indoctrinating you. And then you get attached, like you do with a character in the story. 
So you may like the way this person looks. You may like the way this person smiles or the way they dress. You may like the sound of their voice. These are all, uh, you know, stimulation. It's a stimulation appealing to the senses. So if you like the look, you like the sound of their laugh, you like the look of their smile, the way they dress, and the, the show of personality, this person becomes your favorite newscaster. And whatever mood they're in about what it is they're reporting, you're going to follow into that same pattern of having those different mood swings based upon the information. So when someone presents the same information to you away from the news, well, guess what? They're going to take on the mood of your favorite newscaster when they reported it. Hmm. Lifestyle. So you have to understand your immune system is based on how you live. If you listen to negative music, if you uh, eat bad foods, if you're around negative people, like if you're in a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. you, everyone knows how detrimental to your health that is. <clears throat> stress. It's stressful, and stress is a killer. Stress is a killer. You have a lot of cortisol, and it's not just the cortisol that's being released to combat the stress. You know, you are stressing out your adrenal glands. You know, your adrenal glands regulate your kidneys. All of that's connected. Like anger destroys your liver. Your liver governs your eyes. Mm. Hmm. Your, your, kid, your kidneys govern your ears. A lot of times when people have ear affections, that's a sign that something may be wrong with one of your kidneys. Wow. It's all connected. Every emotion brings on something, either positive or negative. They say laughter is the best medicine. Well, a lot of endorphins are released, you know, and dopamine is released when you laugh, when you're happy, you're in a good mood. There's positivity. Um, I don't know this person's name. Um, but years ago, I remember someone... Uh, talking about an individual that had cancer. And I do remember that cancer was like the biggest attention grabber when it came to health when we were growing up. Um, when someone, when you heard of someone having cancer, you pretty much put it in your mind, oh, they're not going to live very much longer. Right. They're not going to live longer. They're not. That's just, this is it. Okay, time to start. You know, you don't want to think like this, but you want to say, well, let's stay positive and pray to God. Yeah. Okay. So when you start, you start praying, you did everything, but changed your diet. Uh -huh. You did everything, but change your lifestyle. You did everything but question, well, I wasn't born with cancer, so how did I develop it? How did I acquire it? What was I doing different before I had it to the point where I now have it? So by teaching us to be separated from nature, from the earth, we depend upon the doctors. So we go to the house of the pitiful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the house of the pitiful. You're right. Exactly. Right. We go to the doctor's house for the pitiful. And we depend upon them to practice, because it's called a practice. Yes, it is. And it is a, a billion-dollar industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would say trillion. Probably, yep. But Pharmaceutical yeah. companies making much money. 
Oh, yeah. So I would say, you know, let's examine what did you do differently? What do they, what's that old saying? If you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting what you have. Yep. If you keep doing what you, you've done, you keep, you're going to get what you got. Mm -hmm. Right. You're going to get what you got. <clears throat> so if you want something different, you have to do something different, right? Yep. So, but no one questions that. So I find it very interesting that the food and drug administration is the same corporation. I've always found that quite interesting as well. So it's really in your face that the people who are monitoring and passing, the giving the okay for food are also the ones who are making the prescription medicines for you. And 85% of all illnesses come from your stomach. Mm-hmm. Yep. Stomach and the colon. Yes. So by separating you from your true nature, holistic, they have you dependent upon them about your body, your gift, your temple, your machine. Now, in doing so, you dismiss your own common sense, your own logic, because you are saying that I know doctors didn't always exist with medical degrees. And don't get me wrong, doctors are needed because some things that are going on, you just need medical attention or medical, you know, help for it. Right. But it but if you stick to nature, you are less likely to ever step foot in the hospital during your entire life. Mm -hmm. I heard um another <laughs> um holistic practitioner um on on a show. And it wasn't actually a doctor that, anyway, so what they said was what you need doctors in hospital for is like if you break your arm or you need to be stitched up, you know, some of those mm -hmm. type of things you actually need the doctor in the hospital for. But if you eat right and, you know, do other things, then you, you should not need a doctor for anything other than those things. Now, I agree with that because... You know, and, and some other things that, you know, you may not have mentioned, but I, I understand exactly what you mean. Because, you know, you may acquire an infection, so you need strong antibiotics for that infection. You know, some things that, you know, through medical science, uh, they have, you know, several discoveries which are beneficial to society. But on a whole, what they're doing, I mean, it doesn't take rocket science to figure it out. <clears throat> so my point in saying all of that is to bring awareness to the fact that you have to listen to your own body everybody wants to be heard but you don't want to listen when your body is talking to you so what if people have gotten so far away from, you know, because people, um, especially in my age group and definitely the older people have been trained to rely on, you know, the medical industry. We rely on the doctors for everything. And so what if people are no longer in tune with their bodies? How do, how do people know that something is starting to go wrong before it gets to a point where it's, uh, you know, possibly going to change your life or or worse well that's an excellent question it's like with anything else if you got inside your car and all of a sudden you start hearing a noise let's say every time you turn the steering wheel you heard a grinding noise and you just kept ignoring it the car ran well. The radio still works. 
the air and the heat still come on. You know, long the as that radio still recline. Work. Yeah. So long as that radio working, you know, the seat still comes on. <laughs> the the uh, seat still adjusts. The lights work. You know, I put gas in it. I had no problem with it accelerating. The brakes are good. But every time you turn, you hear a, a, a certain noise that you didn't hear before. But since everything else is going pretty good, eh, maybe it'll fix itself. Hmm. Okay. Then, all of a sudden, you turn and you hear a pop. Pop! Now you're hearing a real hard grinding. And you didn't hit anything. And now you're wondering what's going on. So then it comes the tow truck. You get to the mechanic. They lift the car in the air. They have you in there in the office. And they, they pull you out of the waiting room. And they say, we need you to come look at this. And you look under your car over by that particular tire and you see the severity of the damage and they'll ask you um how long has this been going on it just happened yesterday did you hear a clicking sound and then you're standing there like a deer you know looking into headlights because you ignored the clicking sound, you ignore it, the first signs. You ignore it listening to your body. If you eat a food and it puts you in a bad mood, well, something's telling you that that food is not good for your system. Hmm. If you eat a food and your mood is elevated and you feel good, then that means that the chemical release of that food that synergistically worked with the enzymes of your in your body and carry those nutrients out throughout your bloodstream caused that reaction. But see, because we are so taste trained, the only thing we're trying to please is our taste buds. We're not trying to improve the growth of our hair through diet. We're not trying to improve our vision through diet. We're not trying to improve our skeletal system through diet. We're not trying to improve our internal organs through diet. We're not trying to improve our immune system through diet. We're not listening to our body. So we have to pay attention to our bodies and everybody's body is different. Just like personalities, just like fingerprints. When a virus attacks you or has acquired you, you know, has entered into your body, you have to understand that that virus is alive. It is a living thing and it has a conscious. Hmm. It knows it's alive. And it wants to continue to live just as you want to continue to live. So based on your blood type, based on your zodiac, based on your genetic makeup, based on your DNA, based on your, you know, your physiology, your lifestyle, that virus or disease or whatever, pathogen, parasite, has to devise a strategy of survival inside of you based on the way your body is constructed. And it has to do what it has to do to attack and to destroy it because that means it's survival by destroying you. Mm. So if you have blood type A and you have cancer, well, that cancer depending upon the type of cancer it is, has to figure out a strategy of how to attack a blood type A person in order to survive. 
that virus has to figure out how to attack a blood type B person to survive. So each ailment or problem is based upon your unique makeup. So, I, you know, it's interesting that you brought up blood type because um, it's something that I think we don't even pay attention to. However, when we go to doctors and houses of the pitiful, your blood type is right on your chart. They, they need to know what your blood type is. Exactly. And I never really thought about the fact that they have to treat you differently based on your blood type. That's interesting. Yes. And it's also interesting that they always tell you, you don't need to know that. Oh, I know my blood type. Right. And if you don't know your blood type, you should. It's your blood. You are your own biggest classroom that you will ever experience in your life. But who's attending the greatest classroom ever presented to them? Because we are constantly looking out. We're constantly waiting to see something, to smell something, to feel something, to taste something, to hear something. But nobody, or very few people, I should say, are attending the class of self. Nope. They leave that to the doctors. They leave that to the doctors. They leave that to, you know, uh, the entertainers. They leave that to the other people who have accomplished those things. They are absent in their own classroom. They literally put their life in somebody else's hands. And that's always been kind of crazy to me. I've been holistic for a long time. My aunt got me into it when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. it, it's just amazing when I say certain things to people that they should know about their own bodies. You know, they look at you like, like I'm crazy. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's foreign. It's foreign information. And again, they have separated society from the relationship of themselves of nature with the earth so on and so forth so when you are separated from nature you know meaning natural then you're going to be fond of the abnormal and the unnatural and so you're going to vibrate unnaturally people mm -hmm. are not vibrating the way that they should everything is a vibration or a frequency so every pathogen disease fungus parasite has a vibration just like every mood that you have it has a vibration mm -hmm. and if your vibration is lowered to match the frequency or the vibration of a virus of a disease then that disease or that virus can survive in your system mm. but if your vibration is higher or more powerful than that virus or that disease, that virus and disease cannot set up shop and survive in your system. So the, the, the aim of those who are producing, you know, the medications, the pills, so on and so forth, is to keep your vibration lower. Mm -hmm. so, so when you watch the sitcoms and you know something is wrong but it's passed off as a joke they have just lowered your vibration mm -hmm. but you laughed so psychologically you felt like it was okay and acceptable look at how desensitized children are becoming to murder through all of these video games absolutely carjack and murder because they have games that they play where they do this so right. it, it's it's lowered to a game status exactly a game and you think game means fun so now you're saying it's fun even though it's 
a computer generated image, you know, uh, but it's fun to play a game of murder. You know, it's fun to play a game of murder. And so, you know, it, it, and even if you're not into religion or religious beliefs, because I'm more spiritual than I am anything. I don't necessarily consider myself religious, a way of life. Right. So we know that it, even without religion, that it's not good to tell a lie. Right. You know, you, if you know someone's a liar, you're not going to necessarily keep that person around as a friend. Right. They can't be trusted, you know, exactly. and so... We know is is if you know someone who steals, you're less likely to let them know where you live at. Absolutely, they never will. <laughs> exactly. So, but look at how people are entertained with what they call sin. The best shows have the worst characters. True. Because there's the shows. This, new, this new show that everybody's hyped up about on Netflix, and I hear it's super violent, and it's like the biggest hit series on Netflix ever. How is that? Yes, yes, because they are lowering your vibration. And so there has to be an aim to all of this. And, uh, and, and I'm not trying to get too political and off the, the subject matter, but it's all part of your immune system. <laughs> so you cannot defend yourself. Your immune system can't protect you if you are subscribing to and willingly lowering your defenses. It's a mind state. Mm -hmm. that's, our, no, that's the, our first. That's our first thing is to get your mind right. The first, the first thing you have to do to improve your immune system is to be aware. You have to be conscious. Like I said, the virus, the pathogen, the diseases, they have a conscious. They are aware. They are, they are, it is aware, aware of your defenses. The enzymes of your white blood cells, known as cytokines, know their purpose. For something to know its purpose, it has to be conscious. And it is conscious without eyes. It is conscious without ears. It is conscious without a body we're used to seeing on the outside of our body or some form of shape in nature. It, it doesn't look like a grasshopper or a blade of grass. It doesn't look like, you know, a moth or, or you know, a cat or a dog. <laughs> but it has a conscious and it is inside of you. So there are consciousness within consciousness inside of you, along with your overall consciousness. So consciousness is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to be conscious and aware. So if you want to improve your immune system, the first thing you have to do is to be aware, be conscious, be in the moment. If you think about the past, you're not in the past thinking about it. You're in the present thinking about the past. If you're thinking about the future, you're not in the future thinking about it. You're in the present thinking about the future. So what matters is you being in the present at all time, conscious and aware. In the moment. In the moment. Mm -hmm. So you have to attend class and listen to your body. Your body has a relationship with you. You have to listen to your body, just like you do with the car. You want like that car to perform at its optimal level. 
You say that's your baby. You take pictures with it. <laughs> you make sure you take it to the car wash. You put some new rims on it. You put them 22s on it. You got that new system in there. You got that amp. Got them speakers going. That's your baby. And then you go in love with it when you saw it. But then when you hear it clicking, you neglect it. Mm -hmm. And so while so, you're while you're doing all of that to the car, and I know you were using uh, an analogy, but while you're doing all mm -hmm. that to the car, then then you run and put a, a McDonald's something in your body. You're right. Exactly. You take good care of those external things that make you look like you doing great. But the thing that is of most importance, you don't take care of. Exactly. And so I'm glad you brought that up. So it goes back to people being separated from themselves. And now you are focusing on your taste buds instead of focusing on being aware of your total self, not just your taste buds, not just your outer appearance, not just your look, not just about how you are accepted in society, not just about how many likes you're getting on social media. <laughs> that was funny <laughs> to you. <laughs> Yes. So if you truly love yourself, if you truly love yourself, then love yourself enough not to put taste over health. That is so, that's a word in itself right there. I actually had that conversation with someone some years ago um, when I was an event planner, but I've always lived holistically. And uh, one of my things is pork. Um, I read in a medical journal that my mother-in-law uh, gave me years ago, because I've been in this for a long time. And it, because my mom had had a, a high blood pressure reading and she was mm -hmm. close to uh, the stroke level. And so I was reading about beef and pork. And in this medical journal, it broke down that pork, our bodies are not designed to digest pork. And the way that we digest pork, our bodies have to create a specific enzyme to digest, break down this pork. And as it is breaking down that pork, it also breaks our bodies down. And exactly. when I read that, I was like, what? Yes. I, I even took it to my mother-in-law. I said, am I reading this right? So we're eating something that's breaking our bodies down? Why are we eating this? And I, that was in 1996. I stopped eating pork that day and I've never ate it since then because that just did not make sense to me. Now, beef is also one that is not really good for us because of the fat that it has to be riddled with in order for us to eat it. But beef is nowhere near as bad for us as pork is. Plus it, you know, sits in your, in your stomach for seven days. So that, that just don't seem good anyway. Any meat, any something sitting around for seven days and 98.6 degrees just doesn't seem like a healthy thing to do. So I had this conversation with a friend of mine because we ordered lunch at an event, you know, we were doing uh, planning. So we were there for a long time and he's sitting there eating these pork ribs. And so I was telling him about pork and he said, well, they sure taste good and you got to die from something. <laughs> and I said, and he had, he has, has two daughters. And I said, so is that how you're going to feel? when that day comes, because, you know, people are quick to say you got to die from something, kind of like when um, this this virus showed up, you know, everybody's smart, you got to die from something. And then when something showed up, they was like, oh, no. Nah. But anyway, I'm like, is that what you're going to tell your daughters, you know, when you're laying in that hospital bed with high blood pressure and all this other stuff from eating this high sodium meat that needs you, your body to create an enzyme that's going to break it down. Is that what you're going to tell your daughters? Ooh, it was, it tasted good though. That was just like the craziest thing to me. You know, that's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, the desire to satisfy those taste buds is so strong with people that it actually dictates, it dictates 
their behavior. It dictates their drive. It dictates their purpose. People are living to eat. Yeah. They're not eating to live. Yeah. Look at how many food networks, food net, uh, channels there are today. So when we were growing up, the food channel was mom. Yep. <laughs> mom was the food channel, and what mom made was the bomb. Mom would just cook. Mom, mom can make boiled water taste like gourmet. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know what kind of boiled water everyone else grew up with, but I had gourmet boiled water. Because <laughs> my mother could make water taste phenomenal. And it's just water, you know. And so touching back on the immune system, people are so stressed out. Um, they're so uh, depressed. They're so unhappy. And they are chasing things that are deteriorating their health and expecting them to be happier as a result. So when you were a child, norm, under normal circumstances, when you were a child, you naturally had this abundance of happiness. Mm -hmm. And everyone as an adult knew that a child should not be drinking alcohol and should not be smoking cigarettes. So who taught us that when we got older that we have to be so anxious to want to have a drink or to smoke something? That's what we saw our parents doing. Though I did anyway. <laughs> exactly. So we call this adulthood. But we are the ones who are supposed to be smarter than the children. Hmm. A lawnmower, an automobile, a bulldozer, a locomotive, a train, uh, your car, motorcycle, ingests flammable liquids and blows out smoke. <laughs> So why are we as people imitating machines? Why are we chasing a flammable liquid and blowing out smoke? Because we are masking our depression and our unhappiness and our lack of achievements and, and trying to fill that void deep within ourselves that we feel in the process and we call this being happy. We brag about our moments of going to another country and drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. I went to Dubai and had this some drink that they called this, that and the third and it was, it was orange and as I was drinking it, it turned blue and by the time I was finished, it was glowing green. <laughs> Or we drink those uh, drinks, they bring them out and they're on fire. It's got a flame on top. And got a flame on top, you know. Hold on, hold on before the flame go out. Let's take a photo. I'm going to smile at masking my depression and unhappiness with by imitating a machine. It's crazy, isn't it? When you look at it like that, you know, you're talking about flammable liquids and alcohol is flammable. Um, yes. Yeah. And we do drink that flammable liquid. It's a flammable liquid. And so your body was not designed, like you were speaking about the pork, it's not designed to digest a flammable substance. Which is why it tears up uh, people's livers. You see alcoholics and they have messed up right. livers. Well, exactly, because it has to, it, you are taxing your system with toxins. 
First of all, it's a, a foreign substance. It's not even an altered food. It is just completely non-nutritional. There is not a single nutritional benefit to the consumption of alcohol in your body whatsoever. Now, they say wine has resveratrol. Well, resveratrol is more abundant in grape juice where it originates from. But then if your body has to fight off the alcoholic effect, then there goes the resveratrol in wine. But people so we, need... We like to put people, a little alcohol in our resveratrol, huh? <laughs> right, yes. Alcohol in the resveratrol. So it, <laughs> if you got back to the happiness that you once had when you were a child, the last thing you would want to do is to disturb that happiness or trade it off for alcohol or smoking. Now, you know what? I I just was sitting here thinking of stuff and, and you know, my brain works differently sometimes. I'm just thinking about the fact that, so we have the alcohol, which is a flammable liquid, a flammable liquid, yes. And then most people um, are already dehydrated. <laughs> No, exactly. <laughs> so, people are putting this flammable liquid in a already dehydrated body. There's no water. So you no. got a flame going on. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to put it out with. Right. And if you keep in mind, we were made with certain elements. We were made with fire. We have fire in us. That's why our bodies are at 98.6 degrees. We were made with water. All living things were created with water. We, ha we have air, oxygen. We were made with air and we were made from the earth. We have earth. So we have those elements in us. So there has to be a balance. That's why when you are giving your air, you have to be careful how you use that air. How do you breathe? How do you communicate? What type of air are you breathing? You know, you were made with earth. So what are you consuming? What are your fruits and vegetables? What are your supplements? What's your diet? You were created with water. What type of water are you putting into your body? What are you doing to affect your water? Your water communicates faster than the speed of light. So your water has to be healthy. Are you putting healthy water in you, healthy liquids inside of your body? If not, you're damaging the water in which you were made with. If you're not putting healthy foods in your body, you're damaging the earth in which you were made from. If you're not communicating healthier, then you're damaging the air in which you were given. Are you having excess anger? Anger destroys the liver. The liver governs the eyes. Hmm. Are you destroying your own liver with an emotion, not necessarily alcohol, but with the emotion of anger? Because that emotion, that energy has to go somewhere. And each energy affects a different organ. Excess laughing can weaken the heart. Really? Yes. I thought laughter was good for you. It is good, especially after you eat because it aids in digestion. So if you eat something, go watch something funny and laugh and your laughter and you tightening up your stomach muscles and everything is aiding in your digestion. But you, so what is excess laughter? I, well, I don't know what excess laughter would be because I don't want to mess up my heart by laughing too much. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where if, if you you look at it as a whole, everything has to be, as they say, in moderation. We can't always be laughing and never be serious about anything. I, I don't necessarily think in this society, anybody really is anywhere near a point where they have to worry about <laughs> excess laughter, not in this society, because it's always something, you know, 
that something's going to get you your, mm-hmm. right, get but your I attention had, and bring you back to focus. I have right. had some laughter in my life for sure. The laughter where you can't breathe and you're crying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, I'm not saying that when you laugh, you shouldn't laugh hard. I'm just saying that excess laughter, not in the moment of laughter, but excess laughter can weaken your heart wow that's interesting you know and 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 it's understandable because if you have excess anger it's going to do something if you have excess stress it's going to do something and although laughter is a good thing even though it's positive it's going to do something like if you take too much carrot juice your skin will turn orange wow because you have a, a, a influx of beta carotene in your system. If you take too much vitamin C, you'll get diarrhea. Although vitamin C is very good for you, but you'll get diarrhea behind it. Hmm. So there has to be a balance. Hmm. A balance in everything. And so I'm sure. For those who are listening, they want to know, because I know most people who are listening, um, I know that a lot of people probably thought this was going to be a show where they were going to hear what can they go purchase and pop in their mouth and swallow and be done with it. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> when you started off, I was like, oh, we're going to start with the lifestyle. But, you know, all of that is important. Because the yes. mindset, you know, what you focus on expands and what you put in there is what you're going to be focused on. Like you were talking about the news and the negativity, you know, that that's going to affect your mindset. And if you have a negative mindset, it puts you at a vibration. And, you know, all of that stuff is definitely very pertinent information. So I'm glad you took that route because you really are telling everyone how to boost your immune system, popping the pills alone is not going to do it if the rest of it isn't right. And 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 as a, another excellent point you just brought up because when you go to get your oil changed the first thing that they do is that they drain all of the bad dirty oil out of the vehicle first. Mm-hmm. Before they put the clean unused oil into your car or your, your 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 SUV or your truck or whatever. So you can't take supplements and eat right and then turn around and imitate a machine or you know consume non-foods or you know non-beneficial drinks like soda. We we from, we're from the Midwest so we say pop. You, know, you can't drink pop, you know, but everybody else says so. In St. Louis, they say sodies. They call them sodies. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing, sodies. Uh, but soda, you can't consume carbonated juice because everyone knows, well, yeah, I, I think, at, you know, with the heightened awareness of health, you know, carbonated drinks um, rob your bloodstream and your bones of oxygen. Yes. I so when you my drink, mind, right, when you drink a soda pop and then you add caffeine, now let's, let's, let's look at this. Caffeine sh- shrinks your bones. Oh, wow. Acid deteriorates your bones and carbonation robs your bones of oxygen. Man. And people wonder why they get osteoporosis. That's what my mom has. And I told her. I told her. They wonder why they get osteoporosis. And they wonder why when uh, they drink milk, they still get arthritis. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, um, a cow has four stomachs. A human has one stomach. 
So if it takes four stomachs to digest milk, you're three stomachs short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the milk of any mammal is designed for that mammal. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's benefits, but the way that they are processing these meats and these foods and these drinks is just, again, for money. So to absorb the amount of calcium that you are drinking from milk, if that's your preference, it has to be an equal amount of magnesium. And the problem with cow's milk is that it has 11% magnesium and 30% calcium. So you're not consuming enough magnesium to assimilate the calcium you are getting from cow's milk. Although it's full of pus and mucus and oh. I, in my opinion, <laughs> a person just shouldn't drink it, you know. Um, but, you know, to each his own. You know, that, if that's something you want to do, that's a choice. That's free will. Lord. But um, you have to attend the classroom of yourself. You have to attend that classroom. And that classroom is always with you. You don't you're not absent from that class. You may be in a class, but you're sleeping in class. Mm -hmm. Or you're sitting by the window and you're paying attention to everything going outside the window when the, the greatest lessons you will ever learn on your journey of life are being presented to you every moment of your life with every inhale and every exhale. But you want to see what's going on outside the window. The window of your eyes. I need to know who's looking at me. I need to know that this outfit that I have on, that I spent two and a half hours in the mirror looking at myself, what reaction I'm going to get from people when they see me with this outfit on. I need to know that my new cologne or perfume is accepted by everybody else because it, it it blends well with my chemistry. Mm. And the reason I'm bringing these things up is because you have to master the art of detachment while still being able to be involved and interact with people at the same time. Yes. Attachment is the foundation for pain. Attachment leads to suffering mm -hmm. because everything is temporary it's temporal it doesn't yep. last long you have an expiration date what are you going to learn and achieve and accomplish before you expire you can't chase temporary moments you have to attend class and the greatest pleasure you will ever experience is going to come from what you learn from the classroom that you were placed in, which is yourself. Hmm. You don't need any alcohol. You don't need to smoke anything. You don't need to be entertained by anything else. Now, these are part of life, and it's called socialism. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not suggesting that people become monks and dress a particular way and go find a mountain in a cave. I'm not suggesting that at all. But don't let what you are experiencing on the inside of you become lesser of a pleasure than what you're experiencing on the outside of you. Hmm. That's, that's Your grace. I like that. Your greatest pleasure is going to come from yourself. Hmm. Okay. Let me keep so my mind right on that one. <laughs> you, you love yourself. You respect yourself. So when you were a child, you didn't know anything about this because it was all about the external. 
So you jump rope, you play hide and go seek, you play, you know, it, you play catch a girl, kiss a girl. Okay, you rode your bike, you rode your skateboard, you 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 went to the parties, you danced, you did this, you watched the TV shows, you had your favorite songs. So why are we still chasing the outside things? And we have stopped chasing the inside things. What happened to my happiness as a child? When I was a child, I didn't have to drink and smoke to be happy. When I was a child, I slept so sound. When I was a child, I could laugh and everything was, I felt all these chemical reactions from laughing. When I was a child, I felt more free. Now that I'm an adult, I'm complaining all the time. Why is it raining on the day that I got to go to work on Monday? Why is my coworker so stupid? Why did my su why did my sister leave uh leave the food out on the stove and didn't put it in 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 the refrigerator the night before? Why did my my son or my daughter uh, forget to take the garbage out and now we have fruit flies? Oh Lord. That's all stress. That's stress. That compromises your immune system. But as adults, it's hard for us to not <clears throat> become emotionally invested or mentally invested in, you know, in those things because those those stresses do present themselves. So how do, do. we manage our stress? Because um, what I'm hearing you say um on this show because like a lot of people i did think we're gonna come on and rattle off a lot of the supplements that you know we should be taking and stuff and what benefit they had and you know what they you know what they're going to do and all that kind of stuff but what i hear you saying is first we need to manage our stress levels and keep our minds right um, so how do we manage our stress levels? Like people say that you hear people say, you know, you, you got to let go of some of that stress, but I still got fruit flies. So what do I do with the stress? How do you manage your stress then? It's all about perception. They say, and this is hard. I'm not speaking on this as if it's an easy thing. You know, this can be difficult. So what I have learned, and I wish I had have learned this or was taught this sooner, but what I have learned is don't complain, just train. Don't complain, just train. Yes. If someone is not taking from your example, don't complain, train, train them. By the power of the, the creator, I would give the credit to. You don't necessarily, I grew up around people that, you know, reinvented curse words. Mm -hmm. But I find that when I'm around someone who doesn't use profanity, or when I don't use profanity, people are ashamed to use profanity around me. Mm -hmm. I find that when people find out that I don't drink or smoke, people who do drink or smoke are ashamed of drinking and smoking around me. I find that if I'm not frustrated or anger by different situations, people start to look at themselves and they try to curtail their own anger and frustrations. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to change the world. But you have a choice. 
And it's hard. Trust me, it's hard. But that's part of your classroom. It is hard. You know, you don't go into the gym and start bench pressing 400 pounds. First, you got to do some push-ups. And then when you get up to a certain number of push-ups, then you can, you know, graduate to the weights. And then you got to start off small until you can build yourself up to the 400-pound bench press. So in the beginning, and you're making these changes in yourself, the old you is going to be pulling at you and saying, oh, come on, go ahead and curse. Oh, the F with that. Everybody around you, birds of a feather, is cursing. Oh, you trying to be too good. You trying to be different. No, I was taught as a child that cursing was bad. So if it was bad for me as a child to do it, why isn't it bad to do it as an adult? If it was bad for me as a child to drink alcohol and to smoke, why isn't it bad for me to do it as an adult? I was told as a child, don't lie. Lie is a bad lying is a bad thing. You can get your butt spanked for lying. You can get put on punishment for lying. You can get your toys taken away from you for lying. So why do I pride myself on telling lies as an adult? Hmm. You, almost, you know you're lying. You, you almost took me off into a relationship discussion, but we, we ain't going there today. <laughs> We're not going there today. <laughs> you know, what? so why, why are you lying? Like, what are you afraid of? You're afraid of the truth? You're afraid of embracing the truth? You be, are you afraid of being known for telling the truth? Or you are so dishonest with yourself, you don't know how to tell the truth to other people? That's what it is for a lot of people, I think. They have built up this facade of who they represent themselves as, but it's not really who they are. And right. so they have to lie to maintain that facade. You know, now, for a lot of people, it's hard to just be who they are. Right. Because now, they, they're and, convinced that who they are is not good enough. Exactly. Now, here's the thing. If you have to have a facade that you're putting up, what type of immune system do you have? A facade. <laughs> <laughs> You want the real deal cure, but you're not being the real deal with yourself. And you're not being the real deal with other people. So if you have self-love, love for yourself, respect for yourself, and you believe that God is in there, all of us, When you look at another person and you know that God is in you and God is in everybody, then why are you lying to the God in them? So the let God me in them, the God in them, whether that person is aware of it or not, knows you're, you just told a lie. That person may believe in your lie, but if God is in all of us, then you just willingly lie to, to God. That person isn't God, but you get what I'm saying. So I think one of the worst things you can do is lie to yourself. Hmm. I think that I, I I think that in itself is a sin to lie to yourself. That means that you can't trust yourself. That, that means you willingly deceive yourself. So why are you willingly harming yourself as people do with harming themselves through their diet and their lifestyle? So let me ask Thus, you this question. Mm -hmm, sure. So if your diet and lifestyle, attitude and mindset 
is not right, will the supplements still help you? Well, <clears throat> this is interesting because I think now we have to put on the scuba diving equipment. You're made from earth. So you have to be conscious of what you eat. You're made with water. You have to be conscious of what you drink, so on and so forth. So the supplements are going to do what they are designed to do. But is the supplement going to perform at its optimal level in your body when your mood, your lifestyle, your diet, and your mindset is that of negativity and self-destructive? Mm -hmm. If you are a positive person and you take something to boost your positivity, then that supplement has less work to do because it's not fighting your stress. You may need the vitamin C to combat some ailment or disease. But because your stress is so high, and then let's say your stress is high, is not necessarily high because of the disease or the virus. It's because of your stress you acquired the virus or the disease. Mm -hmm. Which your is stress broke virus. you down. Exactly. So you're putting a supplement into a highly stressed body. Then you're going to lose faith and hope in the supplement when the desired result is not produced. But you're not looking at the fact that you weren't helping the supplement helped you. You took the supplement to help you, but yet it has so much other things that your body said, hey, I need this for this right now. I know we over here in pain, or I know we got this virus, or I know we got this disease, but give me this vitamin C, and I got to shoot this on over here. We got an emergency over here in this organ. We got an emergency over here in this part of the body. We're dealing with a high level of stress. We have to put the fire of this stress out right now. So the other organs that need that vitamin C are not going to get that vitamin C because your body is intelligent and it's going to take that vitamin C and put it to the area it needs it the most. Oh, so wow. the supplements that you take, their effectiveness depends upon you. If you're sick, you run to the supplements or you run to the medications to make you feel better. But you're not paying attention to how you got there and what you have to do to eliminate that not to be sick again. Because you are taste trained, you are lifestyle trained, you have been uh, tricked into being removed from your true self and from having a relationship with yourself, you're being distracted from your inner classroom, which is your greatest teacher. You you're being distracted from uh, your true self. You're being distracted from everything that keeps you at optimal health and happiness. Okay. So <clears throat> we are heading into our final uh, 30 minutes of the show. And I have a couple questions for you. Okay. Um, you, we, we started off talking about your mom growing the fresh veggies and fruits and stuff. And mm -hmm. I made a note here that we went from gardens to microwaves. Mm-hmm. 
can you touch on what microwave does to the food and how unhealthy that is? Sure. A microwave, meaning like microscopic, you can't see it. You can't see ultraviolet rays. You can't see gamma rays. You can't see light particles in the dark like cats and dogs do. Our eyes are only designed to see certain things. Like eagles are able to see colors that exist that we can't see. So it penetrates the food and rearranges its molecular structure. So on the outside, it still looks like food, but on the inside, it's totally different because the molecular structure of that particular food has been rearranged and moved at such a rapid rate to create this heat process to warm it back up or to cook it. And so whenever you microwave something, You have just changed it from food to non-food for the convenience. And this is why people are getting cancer from eating too much microwave food, microwave popcorn. Or my, my, my plate is cold, my food got cold. Let me throw the saran wrap on it, throw in the microwave, heat it up. Well, that's not food anymore. It looks and tastes like food, but you just rearranged the internal molecular structure. And so, and that was the process of it heat uh, causing that friction to heat it up. So, go ahead. So microwave foods is you actually presto changer. You just went from food to non-food and you keep eating non-food, you will develop all kinds of, of you know, health problems and or cancer because just cooking with radiation and radiation is not designed to be used to cook. Because I think that a lot of people, um, they feel like, oh, I'm, I'm having some broccoli and I'm having all of these, this healthy stuff, but I'm throwing it in the microwave, you know, and they don't realize that no matter what you put on that plate or how healthy it was in its original state, once you throw it in that microwave, then it's no longer healthy. No, it is not. It, 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 that's an excellent point. It is not healthy at all. Um, but lifestyle has caused us to be always on the go, always in a rush. You know, we can't live our life always in a rush. My next uh, show that I do will be about weight loss. And we're going to get into uh, digestion and food and everything of that, but I will touch on it a little bit here because it's related to stress. So it takes eight to 24 hours for foods to digest. So if you eat breakfast at 9 a.m., by 12 or 1 o'clock, you pile on lunch. And by 6.30 or 7, you pile on dinner. And in between, you've had snacks. So at dinner at 7 to 8 o'clock, you have all this food in your stomach. You're still digesting breakfast. And you go to the bathroom once a day. You have another, uh, number two, a bowel movement. So one times seven equals seven. You go to the bathroom once a day, seven days, but you ate three meals a day. So three times seven is 21. Where are those other 14 meals at? Hmm. They stuck in that colon and hanging out in the midsection. <laughs> And there, thus you have a compromised immune system. So when you take a supplement, there's so much in your colon that the supplement can't get, it, it cannot be properly absorbed. So it gets, it gets lost in the, in the feces, in the mucoid plaque, impacted fecal matter. 
So then you run to the conventional powerful medicines by the pharmaceutical companies. So those supplements are going to do you no good. If you are stressed out, you're chasing pleasures, you're imitating a machine, your diet is bad, you're around toxic people, you are toxic yourself. You have dishonesty with yourself. You have lack self-love, self-awareness, your consciousness. All of that plays a part in everything. Nothing is separate. Nothing is separate. So all of that has to play a part. If you're going to eat a healthy food, don't wash it down with a Diet Coke. Uh, right. <laughs> so you have diet acid. You have acid and diet acid. You have sugar-free acid. Well, it's a diet Coke and it's sugar-free. It's zero calories. Well, who taught you to just count calories? I never count calories, actually. Right. I mean, you need a certain amount of calories based on your body weight, especially if you're trying to gain weight for bodybuilding. And so another trick and this is going to be in the next topic, but another trick that they play on you is they say zero grams of trans fat or zero grams of sugar. So if you see something that says zero grams of sugar or zero grams of trans fat, how does that translate in your mind? I'm asking you that question. Oh, uh, when I see... Um zero grams of sugar i always think they have some type of uh that fake sugar stuff that causes brain cancer but you know i don't really uh the trans fat i don't do trans fats anyway you know the hydrogenated oils and stuff like that so i don't really pay much attention i'm a label reader so just because it's got that thing on the front of the package i still look and see what's actually in it because uh what is that not this, um, what is that stuff? See, I don't do sugar, so now I can't even remember what the names of them are, but I think it's got that fake sugar that, that's worse than <laughs> actual regular sugar. You mean like the uh, Splenda and the yeah. uh, aspartame and yep. all of that? Uh, aspartame, yep. Yep. yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, it causes neurological damage, but zero grams of sugar or zero grams of trans fat there are 1,000 milligrams that make up one gram. <laughs> so something can have 999.99 milligrams and still be zero grams. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and teach. <laughs> uh huh. You see the game that's being played on you? Mm hmm And so if you see zero grams of sugar and then you immediately snatch it up and they say bold new flavor, well, you want the flavor to be bold in your mouth. Bold. Your taste buds are just running towards it. Go get that. And then you can't wait to advertise it for them. You had that new drink. That berry twist. No, I heard about it. Oh my God. I'm addicted to the, I'm in love. And it's got zero grams of sugar too. <laughs> but 999.9 milligrams. <laughs> 999.99 milligrams of sugar. <laughs> and it still technically can be labeled and falls under zero grams of sugar. Wow. So awareness, you have to be aware 
and conscious of the world you live in. You're not dealing with people who know you, who love you, who care about you. They never see your face. They just see your dollars. Yeah. And they see your dollars through the lifestyle you have provided for them. Yep. Yep. They take their trips and live in the big houses while you're right. sitting somewhere sick. There is no personal investment or interest they have in you. And you can't blame them because it is your responsibility to be aware, to be conscious, and to make the right decisions. Can I get you to touch on one more thing real quick? Go ahead. Seedless fruits. Seedless, again, nothing in nature grows without its seed naturally. So why do they make seedless food? Because we were taught, or we were, one of the things that people hate the most, it is the worst feeling in the world, whether you're a child or an adult. What people hate the most, as far as socialism is concerned, is to be laughed at. Nobody wants to be laughed at. People will accept you gossiping or, you know, running your mouth about them behind their back, but to be laughed at carries the most weight. Nobody wants to be laughed at. And so <clears throat> we would talk through conditioning because someone forced their ideology or their indoctrination on us. They forced it on us. You eat a watermelon. You eat the seeds. You're not supposed to eat the seeds. You don't spit the seeds out when you eat grapes. You're not supposed to eat the seeds. But see, that's indoctrination. So their mindset was forced upon you. And you being a child. You're here to learn, to know how to properly function when you become an adult, but everyone else around you is telling you they don't eat the seeds of certain fruits. Well, the seeds of watermelon are good for your kidneys. Watermelon is high in arginine and citrulline, which is good for circulation. And the highest amount of arginine is found in the rind. You can eat the entire fruit of a watermelon and it's, only, it's good for your heart, your circulation, and your kidneys. Mm. And when you eat the seed of a fruit along with the fruit, it has another benefit. Like we use grape seed oil. Mm -hmm. So then why are we so appalled or against eating the seeds of grape? So when you combine the seed with the fruit, it has a totally different synergistic effect in your body. So foods that are seedless are not foods. And the seed is the reproductive system of that fruit, of that food, or that, you know, fruit or vegetable, whatever. And if you are tampering with the reproductive system of a food and you consume that, then what is that doing to you? Probably nothing good since the Food and Drug Administration is the same company. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if they know if they alter this food in this way, what drug you're going to end up needing as a result of it. I believe they definitely know that. I believe that's how yeah. it works. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of time on your hands when you're trying to clone human beings, grow tomatoes on the moon. Right. Tomatoes grow naturally on earth. Why you got to go in outer space to grow a tomato? 
um, because we're destroying the world. We're just destroying Earth. They're destroying whoa, whoa. Earth. And there you go. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, they got to scout out another place where maybe they can go and live. You know, it costs $250,000 to ride up there now. I, I, I didn't know that I'd see the day when going to the moon or whatever was like, you could just go, you buy a ticket. It might be expensive, but you could go. I remember when the first man went to the moon, that was like a big deal. Now you can, if you got 250 grand, you can go too. <laughs> right. That's Which so was actually a hoax because there's no oxygen in outer space. So how was the flag blowing? That is interesting that you said that. They so, were competing with the Russians, and so they wanted to say that they beat the Russians to the moon. So they, I'm, of course, since then, they've been to the moon, but at that particular time, they were not on the moon because there's no oxygen. And, and if the first man was on the moon walking as they were announcing, then who was videotaping him? <laughs> um, so there had to be two? I don't they know. Had to, they had to be someone holding a camera. Yeah, somebody had to hold the camera. You're right. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, so, so I got one more question for you. Okay. And I know that everybody listening is waiting for this part. Are you going to tell us what supplements we got to take? <laughs> yes. So <laughs> on a basic level to improve your immune system, you need to take Vitamin C, you need to take vitamin D. If you're a woman, do not exceed 35 milligrams of, of zinc per day. If you're a man, do not exceed 50 milligrams of zinc per day. Zinc should be consumed with either copper or B6 for assimilation. Not necessarily the copper, but, you know, the B6 is better. If you take a, a B vitamin, take a, B vi a multi-B vitamin, B vitamin complex. A lot of women are taking biotin singly, uh, singularly, and they're developing acne because they're exceeding over 300 micrograms. And, and biotin is a B vitamin. Yes, it's good for your hair, but you also need to take it synergistically, like, Oranges are not just made of vitamin C. Carrots are not just made of beta carotene. Bananas are not just made of potassium. There's a host of other elements that stabilize the main element that it is known for. So everything has to be done synergistically. So vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin D is something you can't overdose on. It is responsible for over 200 and... 50 functions and directly related to 36 organs in your body oh wow now i take d3 is that good d3 and make sure you take it with mk7 or k2 m m as in mary k as in kite the number seven or k2 make sure it has that with it because that helps your body to assimilate it easier Vitamin D is very powerful when your immune system is compromised for like the cold and flu. It's because you're low on vitamin D, but vitamin D is ineffective without vitamin C. Vitamin C is very good, but it is ineffective without vitamin D. And both of those need zinc. So vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. Take those on a regular basis. Uh, take vitamin E as well. Do not take vitamin E with iron because they do not complement each other. If you're going to take anything dealing with iron, don't have a vitamin E supplement in uh, conjunction with it. So vitamin C, uh, you shouldn't exceed 3,000 milligrams, but you have to test your own body out. Everybody's different. Uh, usually when I go above 3,000, then, you know, I am dealing with, you know, the bathroom, <laughs> put it lightly. <laughs> so you get your vitamin C, you get your vitamin D, get your zinc. 
And then you want to take something known as MSM, methane. It is uh, sulfono sulfur, and every living thing has sulfur in it. It is one of the most abundant elements found throughout nature. So methane, MSM, and you want to take hyaluronic hyer acid, I'm sorry, hyaluronic acid. Now, the reason for the hyaluronic acid is because it directs the MSM as to where it's supposed to go in your body. And the vitamin C activates the MSM. So if you have vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, MSM, and hyaluronic acid, you, are, you have just given your immune system one of the most powerful arsenals that it can have. And you should start to feel your mood change, um, you know, elevation, your, your thinking. You should be sleeping better and everything else. Uh, you have to research which of these supplement companies are best for you in your body. Somebody may say they like Solar Ray or somebody may say they, not, they like Nature's Way better or they like Now better. You have to know your body and know which ones fit your body the best to come up with your own combination. If you find a multivitamin with all of that in it, then fine. You know, check the reviews. And I always look at the bad reviews. And if people are saying the same thing about a product, then that's I know to avoid that product. Um, but sometimes people give bad reviews because they didn't like the customer service or something like that, which is neither here nor there as far as the, uh, the superiority or inferiority of the, the product itself. So vitamin C, vitamin D3 with K2 or MK7. Zinc, a multi B complex, MSM, hyaluronic acid. And the next one I'm going to name is called lecithin, sunflower, like sunflower seeds, sunflower lecithin. Lecithin is found in every blood cell, is most abundantly found in the brain, and it detoxifies the liver of fat. And lecithin is key in the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is the outer coating of every blood vessel and vein. When the myelin sheath deteriorates, you have MS, multiple sclerosis. So you want to take you want to take your lecithin. Sunflower lecithin, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, vitamin E, MSM, hyaluronic acid, B-complex. You take those on a daily basis or three to four times a week. And this is not intended to treat, diagnose. You know, diagnose, treat, or cure anything if you, you know, seek medical. This is for entertainment purposes only. But stick to something natural. Just remember to give your body what it cannot produce. Your body doesn't produce vitamin C. Your body doesn't produce vitamin D. Your body doesn't produce zinc. Your body doesn't produce lecithin. It doesn't produce MSM. It doesn't produce hyaluronic acid. You have to give it that. So whatever your body doesn't produce, you give it that. And then it'll take that and start making the other parts that it cannot produce and make it from what you do give it. So give your body what it needs so that it can do what it has to do. So are there foods that we can eat to get some of those things as well? You can. I mean, vitamin C, you know, citrus fruit. You have other fruits that have vitamin C. And this is where the classroom comes in at. We are in the age of information. So I don't want you to rely on my words. I want you to go and research it. So go on Google, go on Bing or whatever your favorite search engine is and look up benefits of vitamin C, benefits of vitamin D, benefits of MSM, benefits of hyaluronic acid, benefits of B complex and understand what it's doing 
to what it is you're taking because that puts your mind and your mood and your vibration in a different level when you're consuming these foods and these supplements. So there are foods, foods that have B vitamins, foods that have contain vitamin D. Do foods sunflower that have seeds have, acid. Do sunflower seeds have the lecithin? Sunflower, sunflower lecithin, lecithin is made from sunflower seeds, but you're not going to get the concentration of lecithin just from eating the seeds by themselves. Okay. So that's the benefit of living in this age is that we uh, are able to produce certain products that are naturally good for us because of the technology. Back in the day, they had to eat a ton of sunflower seeds to get the benefit. And sunflower seeds are used for strengthening your bones because they are high in sulfur. So it's good for your bones. Okay. So remember, supplements are not the answer. The answer is your mindset and your mood, your frequency, your lifestyle, and your diet. When you consume food, you can take your supplements with the food to trick your system into believing it just consumed highly nutritious food. But some supplements you have to consume on an empty stomach in order for your body to derive benefit. MSM and vitamin C and vitamin D, you consume on an empty stomach. Oh, you do? So that you can, yes, so you get a better benefit. So you can wait like 30 minutes later you know, if you start to feel, your system may not be used to that, but if you start to feel a little something, like you're going to get sick, then go ahead and drink some water and then, you know, start to eat food. But some supplements you're supposed to take on the empty stomach, some supplements you have to take with food. I didn't know I could take the MSM on an empty stomach. I've always taken it with food. Yeah, the food will absorb it if you take it. Take it on the empty stomach and it'll do more benefit in your body well let me say i i don't take it before i eat like i don't really take supplements with my food because i just you know i'm a pretty good cook and i just be all into my food so mm -hmm. i don't take anything with my food but after i eat you know maybe 20 minutes later i'll start taking my supplements well, yeah that's exactly what i mean in that order okay. not necessarily while you're eating you're popping the pills but after you've completed your meal, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, you want to take the supplements, fine. Or if you want to take the supplements before and then eat, that's also fine. Okay. 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 All right. So we are getting towards the end of um, your segment for today. This has been very, very interesting. And one of the things that I wanted to say before I did start to close out the segment, I just wanted to let our listeners know how accomplished you are in this area as you have effectively cured some people from cancer. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, one of my patients uh, was given three months to live um, with chemo, six months without. Uh, his name was Dale. Dale uh, was from Texas, and Dale uh, didn't, he didn't smoke, but Dale was fond of drinking beer. Now, beer contains hops, which is estrogenic. Estrogen is the female hormone. And an excess of estrogen can cause cancer in anybody. Oh. And so he had microcancer of the liver and of the lungs. So they had to take a microscopic camera to, to even figure out what was going on with Dale. And so I put Dale on a, a, a dietary regimen. Remember what I said, it's not only what you take, but what you do not consume. So we had to eliminate all alcohol, no wine, no beer. And then I implemented the cacao black seed oil, wheat grass, barley grass, oat grass, spirulina and chlorella, uh, fruits and vegetables, and natural honey. 
and had a blender drink that he consumed every day, uh, alkaline water. And I recommended that Dale look at a lot of comedy <laughs> for laughter. Okay. That okay. Was part, that was part of the process, huh? That was part of the process, not just, you know, take a pill or take this supplement or take this prescription and feel better. The entire picture has to be in order. You can't put good oil into your car without eliminating the bad oil first. So in three months, uh, Dale gained 20 pounds and, and his cancer was completely gone. Wow. That is so amazing. That always amazes me every time you, you tell that story. Um, and so you recommended that um, people watch Food Inc. Let me see my Food Inc. Forks Over Knives and Food Matters, right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. So you want to um, tell everybody and what that, they can expect from your show again? Let, let me add one more. The Gershon Miracle. The Gershon Miracle. Yes, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's been years since I've seen it. But yeah, the Gersh those four, the Gershon Miracle, Food Matters, Food Inc., and Forks Over Knives. Is that G-E-R-S-I-A-N? Uh, I believe so. Gershon, yeah. Gershon Miracle. I believe so. Okay. So you want to tell everyone how they can connect with you and what to expect from your monthly shows, which will only be one hour. So you guys have to make sure you tune in because he's only <laughs> going to be on an hour after today. We got a good, some good stuff today. Um, it's a journey. So I spoke about the classroom. So welcome to class. <laughs> welcome to class. That's a good one. <laughs> and if they want to um, connect with you, you know, maybe they have, a relative family or relative with cancer and may want to ask some questions how might they do that well we can um in time we'll be able to set something up but if anyone has any questions on the next show even if it is off topic if it is for the health of a loved one or relative or a friend or someone dear to you then you may ask that question and i'll do my best to address it for you and then we get back to the subject matter Okay, and your next show is November 1st, Monday, November 1st, from 7 to 8 a.m. He is the early morning. He's on the Monday morning talk. That'll be every first Monday of the month. So you'll catch him in November and then again in December. So make sure you don't miss it, even though I may do some replays of his shows. Do you have any final words for the listening audience? Yes. Get back to your original state of health through happiness and awareness. Uh, be conscious and love yourself more and stop chasing things that are destroying you. All right. And don't, don't miss the class of self. You have one chance in a lifetime for the, the best class you will ever attend, which is your life. Don't miss out on it. Okay. All right. Well, I am Xavier Fox, your host of Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox. And we just had the, um, why not just draw a blank? Now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this is live. So <laughs> what, what, what do I always call you? What is, what? Uh, uh, let me see. Holistic practitioner. <laughs> And we just had our holistic practitioner, Mr. Samir Ali on. You can catch him again on Monday, November 1st from 7 to 9. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and my website, XavierFox.com. And all of those things, I'm Xavier Fox. So until Thursday, Thursday, we are going to have What's Hot. And we'll have our correspondent from D.C., Nicole Williams, she'll be telling us what's going on in D.C., and I'll be telling you what's going on over here in Chi-Town. So everybody stay safe, be prosperous, and I will chat with you on Thursday. Thank you for having me on this show. You are welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Bye-bye.